All right, everyone, it's been a cruel, cruel summer temperature-wise, at least in some parts of the world. Parts of the southeastern United States are certainly cooking up. Uh, China has been hammered. So is India. They've also gotten a lot of uh, interesting rain patterns developing over there in the subcontinent. As a result, and, and there have been a couple of heat waves here, as a result, people are panicking. And the liberals in the United States, of course, wasting no time deciding to uh, uh, engage in some political fear-mongering to, you know, push their energy agenda, which doesn't really make sense. We can parse that apart some. And to push their political agenda. Climate change is clearly caused by too many gun owners. I have a feeling that at some point they'll blame gun manufacturing for being disproportionately resulting in emissions, and uh, we need to stop that because, uh, you know, warm weather is scary. Uh, first, let's point out a couple things. When Elon Omar says that it's the warmest day in 120,000 years, so humans truly have uh, developed the Anthropocene era. Now, there is no longer any debate to be had. We're all going to die. She's wrong, or at least speculatively wrong. When we look at temperature data, when, since when have humans had reliable recording techniques for that data? roughly the end of the 1800s. The sophistication before that was limited and human activity on the planet actually quite limited. Of course, you don't have a temperature monitoring station in South America in 1650. You don't have one in the middle of Africa in 1825. You don't have a temperature monitoring station in Siberia or in China or in Australia. Really, you're talking about parts of Europe and parts of the United States and Canada. That's basically it. Sure, there are a few other countries that dabbled in scientific exploration of that type, but it really isn't until at least the Industrial Revolution that anything really picks up. The problem being, of course, uh, therefore, if your data cuts off at that point, uh, when humans were beginning to industrialize, uh, no shit, you're going to see a CO2 rise. And the world has gotten slightly warmer. Uh, that's definitely true. Global warming is not mythological. It's just a matter of debate over what's causing it. Is there a feedback mechanism? Is this a short-term upswing within a long-term downswing or something of that nature? Yeah, you have to look at the larger picture, but we really, we, in 1880 is when temperature records go back to uh, with any reliability at all. You're talking about 140 years of data. That is a goddamn blink of the eye in terms of just the existence of the human race going back several hundred thousand years to archaic Homo sapiens. It has nothing to do with this 120,000 year timeline. When science goes back further than that, you can get, you can get uh, information from tree rings. That pushes you back a few centuries further, generally. Uh, some very, very old trees are a few thousand years old. But it's still not 120,000 years, is it? When you go back beyond the oldest tree rings that you can use for analysis for temperature data and, and you know stuff in the atmosphere that you can test for by testing each ring, the tree is absorbing uh, different amounts of, of nutrients, minerals, and so forth. It's growing at a different rate. You can extrapolate temperature. You can't necessarily know the exact temperature. And when you're talking about a long-term deviation of about 2 degrees, I hazard a guess that scientific sophistication is not quite enough to compensate for basically just a standard deviation <laughs> within the data that you're looking at when you're looking at fucking tree rings from 400 years ago. Um, but we'll give them credit. We'll, we'll give them a thousand years of rock solid data. In that time period, you do not have enough actual data to establish that the world is on a runaway train towards Armageddon. And that's the inference. Beyond that, you're looking at ice cores and a handful of stratifying minerals out there that slowly settle out over time and, and you know you can drill into them and get some data from that as well. That's basically all you've got. Beyond that, you're looking at you know fossils. Basically, you're you're going to get calcined uh, you know animal remains and uh, you know bits of uh, of moss that were stuck in a piece of coal 50,000 years ago or something like that. That's basically all you've got to go on. So first, the claim that it's been the hottest day in 120,000 years is speculative. It's potentially spurious. You don't actually know that. You're inferring it based on inference upon inference within science. Now, it's still an educated guess. The problem is that in 50 years, you might develop some new technology or some new methodology that completely overturns that belief. You could find out that actually it's relatively cool now compared to that same data cluster that you've got. Secondly, 
When people in the political elite, most of which do not have degrees in science, yet will talk down to the rubes like me who also don't, despite the fact that I did actually take quite a few scientific courses, I've certainly been, as an amateur, interested in especially biological science, especially plants, for a very long time, uh, so I do know something about this. You know, there are, there are ecology courses at UVM. Uh, <laughs> despite that, when politicians engage in saying things like this, what they're really doing is fear-mongering, and we know this. Uh, that we can judge much more accurately than long-term temperature records. How do we know this? Because they don't walk the walk. They only talk the talk. You're supposed to live in the pod, make do with less. By the way, you should be less materialistic. I will always point that out. I am an environmentalist, but I've planted trees, and I've done organic gardening, and I've utilized terra preta, and I've cleaned up trash in the woods out behind Jasana Drive on numerous occasions, including hall after hall of old bricks. Not technically trash, because it's you know, it's a mineral, basically. A uh, baked chunk of clay, uh, that was for the garden. That was a good summer, by the way. Most of the bricks in the garden were free, uh, <laughs> which was helpful. I was uh, in, in the uh, poor at the time. Uh, I, I've done these things, but politicians don't. When's the only time you see a politician planting a tree? It's when they've got some sort of diplomatic get-together and they're planting a tree in a park as a commemoration of the 50th year of our peace treaty or something like that. That's it. I don't see Klaus Schwab picking up uh, trash on the Strand. I don't see the Obamas saying, you know what, our Martha's Vineyard mansion might not have been such a great idea because it'll be underwater in 10 years, so maybe we should flip this property. I don't see them downsizing their lifestyle, giving up the limos, giving up the private jets. I don't see them restraining their travel. Uh, you know, it would, it, ironically, if the jet-setting elite wanted to make one single contribution to uh, ending climate change or reducing emissions or any of these things. Just stop traveling around to see one another and teleconference. Use computers. The, the magic of the internet is a wonderful fucking thing. You can use Skype or something like that and you can talk to people at a distance. I don't know that Klaus Schwab understands this. That's a lot more efficient than taking a jet for you and like five other people now, isn't it? Plus the crew. <laughs> it uses a lot less emissions for that, you know, hour-long meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't go to Tokyo for the big conference. You've got to call in from your uh, computer. Just do that. If they did that, at least they would have done something. Talking about the issue does absolutely nothing. My thoughts remain the same. Climate change is real. The, the climate of the Earth has changed wildly over millions and millions of years. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it does this in the absence of humans, though. And so, regardless of what humans do, one would think the climate would still be changing, and correlation does not necessarily equal causation. The amount of impact that humans have had on the world is, at this point, quite advanced. But we're not exactly sure what impact that has. Uh, the, the main impact is that we've terraformed the entire surface of the planet. It's not really so much about the car that you're driving, it's more about the fact that you live in a concrete jungle. We have terraformed the Earth. We have wide expanses of land that effectively act as heat islands, and they do tend to trap and then radiate heat, like L.A. Is, is a great example. Massive sprawl, not a huge amount of forested area within that area, unless, unless you got into the Hollywood Hills, you know, like in Bel Air or something. Plenty of trees up there when they don't burn. Uh, but core L.A. is just a vast expanse of tin and concrete and asphalt, etc., etc., no shit, it generates heat. But that kind of uh, lifestyle is not something the WEF wants you to avoid. They just want to stack that whole area with pods. Th that's all they want. They're not going to give you an extra park or anything like that, and they don't see them planting trees. They don't encourage it. When are you encouraged to uh, forsake some of your materialism and not buy Chinese shit? When, when are you to... By the way... When are you told that you should boycott China because of inefficient trade lines in which U.S.-based chickens go to China to get processed and chopped up and then get reshipped back in? That makes a whole lot of sense if you're worried about climate change. That's a lot of emissions now, isn't it? That ship is running on fossil fuel. But the powers that be will never tell you to give up that element of lifestyle because they want the globalism. They just want you to make do slowly with less and less. They want to pack you in more and enslave you. It's nimbyism. Elon Omar does not pick up trash alongside the freeway. Elon Omar is not going to give up her McMansion. Elon Omar is not going to give up her vehicle. 
She's not going to stop taking taxpayer-funded plane trips to every part of the United States or, or, you know, to go see some foreign dignitary in China. She's not going to do that. And so when she rants about the fact that we need to do more about climate change, okay, what, what are, are they suggesting? What does it boil down to? More taxes, more government power, how convenient for them. Fuck you, we're going to eat the filet mignon, and you will eat the bug burgers. That's basically it. So if they're not walking the walk, I don't take anything that they say seriously. These people are not scientists anyway. Uh, and this appears to be based, by the way, according to the community notes, this claim uh, on, on potentially spurious data anyway. That's about all. Peace out.